you're not leaving a man because you're worried about him, you don't love that man. Stop kidding yourself. You pity him. And pity is not a foundation for love. You don't love someone you pity. And thank you for this comment, Lauren, because I want to go into this. This is my mutual go follow her. Context is uh, Edward Scissorhands and all of the movies that con convinced women that love is based on things that love is absolutely not based on. That groomed women and set women up to have terrible relationships. And Edward Scissorhands is, you know, basically like a baby inchmel. Now the messaging is subtle, but um, it's consistent. So many, Beauty and the Beast, Edward Scissorhands, and I'm sure lots of others, and I'm gonna break down some of those movies too. Message is clear. You can change him. You can save him. He needs you. That's not love. That is not love, y'all. And that's why we're making videos lately being like, you know, we talk about how men aren't capable of loving. Women, we are not capable of loving. If we have not healed our codependency, and if everything we do for a man is because we feel sorry for him, because we, we want to change him, we want to make him a better man, and blah, 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 you know, we're afraid what, what will happen to him if I leave. That is not love. You do not love that man. You are codependent. You are trying your best to love him, but you can't love someone you don't respect. And as Lauren says in this beautiful comment, it's arrogance. And that's what I realized I was doing. I mean, I, I'm, my part in dating men who sucked is that, especially that abusive one, that just like my dad, I didn't respect them. I pitied them. I felt sorry for them. I felt like I had to be with them because they needed me. Because what would they do without me? My hobo schedule ex didn't have a place to live. Like literally had a hammock, y'all. I'm not even kidding. As soon as we started dating, and I actually didn't even want to date him really, but I just was like, I just fell into it. He moved into my place while I was on vacation and then wouldn't leave. He had a, you know, a banjo, a backpack. You know what I mean? He was like, t oh, look, there's the, there's the horses. There they are. Boom. There they are, maybe they'll come visit. Every time I was like, what am I doing? This is ridiculous, this is so stupid. Like, I deserve better than this. This is before it got like violent and I was getting, you know, trigger warning, a grape. I was like, God, this guy is such a, like he was exhausting me, he's such a burden, he doesn't have anything. I went to Colorado, uh, I went to Santa Fe and then Colorado Springs, I went to multiple places trying to get this man a social security card so he could get a driver's license. So maybe he could get a car because I was a soccer mom. Only did I have a diaper bag I carried around with me all the time, you know, in case to calm the baby. In case he has a bad mood, in case he, you know, I need some water or some, some weed to smoke because of his anger. You know, like, also, someone I shuttled around back and forth to work until I got him wheels, right? I got him a car. I didn't buy him a car, but I found my friend had an extra car. We had this whole situation where, like, he was going to make it anyway. Every decision I made that was a terrible decision was based on worrying about this man, grown ass man. When I was leaving town, I'd just literally come from the police station to report everything he'd ever done. And I was with my best friend, Annie, who flew down from Alaska to meet me and get me the hell out of New Mexico. And we went to the sheriff's or whatever, and that was terrible. That did no good. Fork a cab. Anyway, we stopped at the grocery store on the way out of town, literally running from this man. And I ran into one of our, 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 our mutual friends. He didn't realize any of these things that this man was doing. And I was like, will you just make sure that he's okay? Will you take care of him? I'm worried about him. And my friend, and he was like, after the guy left you, he was like, that man graped you and you're still worried about him? Yep. Yep. That's chronic codependency. That's not love. I think that women have been conditioned to be codependent. Some of us, like me, are chronically codependent and literally had to get some serious help to stop doing this. Other women just kind of wake up one day or they go to therapy and, you know, whatever. They stop doing it or they get burned enough times, but not me. After I left town, after I literally left the state, put a state between us, the state of Arizona between me and this man, I still wanted to know if he was okay. I still worried about him all the time. I still didn't cut him off for a couple months because I loved him. I did not love that man. I've never loved that man. I had no idea what love was. And because I felt superior to him. I felt superior. I felt morally superior to him because of all of his terrible decisions and all the bad things he did. And he seemed, by the time I left him, he was just straight up, I believed he was just evil because he had those dark, 
you know, dilated pupils when he was doing terrible things to me, like he was possessed by a monster. He seemed to have no empathy, no heart, no nothing. Although I had seen this other side of him when we first started dating, so I was convinced that's his real character. This person is someone else. No, this is who he's always, always was. This is what he did to get into your home because he's a homosexual and a predator who needs prey. I worked out a lot of my dad issues on him. He gave me a sense of purpose. You're fixing someone, they're your little project. That gives you a sense of purpose, that's not love. He was like a son to me in the end. It's disgusting, I don't wanna fork my son. Which is why I like my, my Schmegs drive just started to go down, down, down. Cause I, I just was like, ugh. I used him as a way to try to prove that maybe all of those people that harmed me in the past you know, this man would heal that wound. No, he made it worse. You know, all, I was using him and that was a tough pill to swallow. I'm not victim blaming here whatsoever. I, this man was so abusive and so awful and I went through the ringer. But what I realized later on as a way to, that felt very empowering so I didn't get stuck in that victim narrative because you know, being a vic victim of domestic violence but also somebody who is really codependent and can easily get stuck in the victim narrative I mean, being, you know, almost getting unalive by a partner, I hit the like victim narrative jackpot, you know? You know? What I realized later on is this man was like, I was wanted so bad for him to prove me that, to me that all men don't suck. And then he didn't prove that. And so then I was like even more convinced that men suck and all they want to do is hurt me because that's been my experience. So I had to take another break from men because I did not know how to see them for who they were. I saw them as someone who could help me heal, someone who could prove something wrong who distract me from the fact my book didn't sell, something, someone to worry about instead of all the other things, because I'm full of fear. I worry about stuff all the time. This gave me a very focused <laughs> person thing to worry about. The, the person I should have been worrying about was myself, staying alive because this man was so violent and terrifying. You know, I'm worrying about all the wrong things. And this man, by the way, is fine. I was so worried about him. Guess what? He was cheating on me the whole time. He went right into this other girl's arms. And then when she, you know, kicked him to the curb, he, he just he just moves on. He just finds another woman to enable him and take care of him. A woman with unhealed trauma she hasn't dealt with and serious chronic codependency. And guess what? He's married. He's married to someone. I feel so bad for her. When I go back and I watch so many movies and I'm like, besides my own trauma from childhood, my own narcissistic dad, all of these things that kind of set me up to be codependent, the culture itself encouraged it with crap like Edward Scissorhands and Beauty and the Beast. I'm gonna do a whole I'm gonna do a whole breakdown of Beauty and the Beast because that man literally like threw a table at her. He's a violent, terrible man, has a bunch of candlesticks and clocks who are servants of him that are also terrified of him. You're supposed to think that he's like a great bachelor for this amazing woman to be with? A woman who has serious daddy issues because she's already taken care of her dad. Oh my God, okay, I gotta do another video for that. The point is, is that they've been conditioning us for a long time to think of love as all the wrong things. And that's why I go back and watch these movies. And I'm like, well, I guess it makes sense. I guess it makes sense how I ended up this way. It was all according to the big plan. His patriarchy needs men to be individualistic, selfish pricks, and women to be their codependent enablers that get everything else done and rely on these selfish pricks because we are so bonded to them, we don't know how to leave them. They can continue being, you know, like patriarchy, capitalism, white supremacy, it's all tied together. They can be good little workers who are dead inside while we take care of everything else. So no, sorry, that's a long rant. But if you are not, or you are with your partner and your love is based on worrying about him all that, that is not love. You feel better than him. And you can't see him as an equal partner if you're looking down on him. If you're looking up at someone or looking down at someone, you can't see them in, the, in their humanity. You can't see eyeball to eyeball. That is not a partnership. That's not love. That's some unhealed trauma, codependency, what a bunch of other things, but it ain't love. It ain't love.